Good day, everyone. It's Grizzly's Story Time. Today's story is a fantastic story with a happy ending and a great lesson. And it's called The Monkey and the Crocodile. I'm not sure if you will have heard this story before, but I'm sure you will like it. So here we go with the story. The Monkey and the Crocodile. Once upon a time, a clever monkey lived in a tree that bore juicy red rose apples. He was a very happy monkey. One fine day, a crocodile swam up to that tree and told the monkey that he had travelled a long distance and was in search of food as he was very hungry. The kind monkey offered him a few rose apples. The crocodile enjoyed them very much and asked the monkey whether he could come again for some more fruit. The generous monkey happily agreed. The crocodile returned the next day, and the next, and the next one after that. Soon the two became very good friends. They discussed their lives, their friends and family, like all friends do. The crocodile told the monkey that he had a wife and that they lived on the other side of the river. The kind monkey offered some extra rose apples to take home for his wife. The crocodile's wife loved the rose apples and made her husband promise to get her some every day. Meanwhile, the friendship between the monkey and the crocodile deepened as they spent more and more time together. The crocodile's wife started getting jealous and she wanted to put an end to this friendship. So she pretended that she could not believe that her husband could be friends with a monkey her husband tried to convince her that he and the monkey shared a true friendship. The crocodile's wife thought to herself that if the monkey lived on a diet of rose apples, his flesh would be very sweet. So she asked the husband to invite the monkey to their house. The crocodile was not happy about this. He tried to make the excuse that it would be difficult to get the monkey across the river, but his wife was determined to eat the monkey's flesh. So she thought of a plan. One day, she pretended to be very ill and told the crocodile that the doctor said that she would only recover if she ate a monkey's heart. If he wanted to save her life, he must bring her his friend's heart. The crocodile was aghast. He was in a dilemma. On the one hand, he loved his friend. On the other, he could not possibly let his wife die. The crocodile's wife threatened him, saying, if he didn't get her the monkey's heart, she would surely die. So the crocodile went to the rose apple tree and invited the monkey to come home to meet his wife. He told the monkey, you can ride across the river on my back. The monkey happily agreed. As they reached the middle of the river, the crocodile began to sing. The frightened monkey asked him why he was doing that. The crocodile explained, I'm going to have to kill you and take your heart to save my wife's life. The clever monkey told him that he would gladly give up his heart to save the life of the crocodile's wife, but he had left his heart behind in the rose apple tree. He asked the crocodile to make haste and turn back so that the monkey could go and get his heart from the apple tree. The silly crocodile quickly swam back to the rose apple tree. The monkey scampered up the tree to safety. He told the crocodile, Go back and tell your wife that she's married to a fool. How could I be living if I hadn't got my heart? That's the end of this short story, children. There is a moral lesson we can learn, and that is, Don't ever underestimate yourself. There are bigger fools in this world. The crocodile's wife wasn't very nice, was she? But luckily, the monkey was clever enough to see a way out of that situation. Well, children, that's it for today. I do hope you all enjoyed hearing today's story. I will see you all again soon. Bye! and the three bears. Good day everyone, 
It's Grizzly Story Time! Today we have a great old favourite story with a nice lesson for us all and it's called Goldilocks and the Three Pears. I'm very sure you will all know this story. Okay, let's start. Goldilocks and the Three Pears. Once upon a time there was three bears who lived in a house in the forest. There was a great big father bear, a middle sized mother bear and a tiny baby bear. One morning their breakfast porridge was too hot to eat so they decided to go for a walk in the forest. While they were out a little girl called Goldilocks came through the trees and found their house. She knocked on the door and as there was no answer she pushed it open and went inside. In front of her was a table with three chairs. One large chair, one middle sized chair and one small chair. On the table were three bowls of porridge. One large bowl, one middle sized bowl and one small bowl and three spoons. Goldilocks was hungry and the porridge looked good. So she sat in the great big chair, picked up the large spoon and tried some of the porridge from the big bowl. But the chair was very big and very hard. The spoon was heavy and the porridge too hot. Goldilocks jumped off quickly and went over to the middle sized chair. But this chair was far too soft and when she tried the porridge from the middle sized bowl it was too cold. So she went over to the little chair, picked up the smaller spoon and tried some of the porridge from the tiny bowl. This time it was neither too hot nor too cold. It was just right and so delicious that she ate it all up. But she was too heavy for the little chair and it broke into pieces under her weight. Next Goldilocks went upstairs where she found three beds. There was a great big bed, a middle sized bed and a tiny little bed. By now she was feeling rather tired. She climbed into the big bed and lay down. The big bed was very hard and far too big. Then she tried the middle sized bed but that was far too soft so she climbed into the tiny little bed. It was neither too hard nor too soft, in fact it felt just right. All cosy and warm and no time at all Goldilocks fell fast asleep. After a while the three bears came back from their walk in the forest. They saw at once that the door of their house was pushed open and the father bear looked around then roared with a growly voice. Mother bear said in a quiet gentle voice, somebody has been sitting in my chair. Then the little baby said in a small squeaky baby voice, somebody has been sitting in my chair and it's broken. Then Father Bear looked at his bowl of porridge and saw the spoon in it and he said in his great big growly voice Somebody has been eating my porridge. Then Mother Bear saw her bowl had a spoon in it and said in her quiet voice Somebody has been eating my porridge. Little Bear looked at his porridge bowl and said in his small squeaky baby voice Somebody has been eating my porridge and has eaten it all up. Then the three bears went upstairs and Father Bear saw at once that his bed was untidy and he said in his big growly voice Somebody has been sleeping in my bed. Mother Bear saw that her bed too had the bedclothes turned back and she said in her quiet gentle voice Somebody has been sleeping in my bed. Then Little Bear looked at his bed and said in his small squeaky baby voice Somebody is sleeping in my bed. He squeaked so loudly that Goldilocks woke up with a start. She jumped out of bed and away she ran down the stairs and out into the forest. And the three bears never saw her again. That's the end of today's story. Is there a moral? Well, there is, but it's more of a lesson. The lesson of the story is the need to respect the privacy and property of others and how your actions can hurt others. Well, my friends, that's it for today. I do hope you all enjoyed hearing today's story. I think I might be the daddy bear. <laughs> See you again soon. Bye!